Hey guys, welcome to Into the Word. Uh, in case you didn't already know, I'm Ian. And uh, so, as I've been promising for a while, I've actually got um, an actual outline. Um, so, this is probably not going to be a short video. I'm going to say that right up front. Um, also, right up front, I'm just going to say uh, that um, this topic it might be a controversial one. Um, I might ruffle some feathers of some people on both sides of this argument. Um, and I'm just going to be reading from the word. I'm going to, you know, what it says. I'm going to say it. And, um, you know, you can agree with me or not. But uh, this is what the word says. Um, so what I am going to be talking about, the title of my message today is, Is Speaking in Tongues Biblical? Um, and I was going to start with uh, Acts 2, 1 through 12, but I mean, just that section alone is going to be, you know, a long uh, video. Um, so I'm jumping over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Um, and I'm doing that because it's, it's pretty much explained, you know, how we're supposed to use our spiritual gifts in a church setting. Um, or the proper use of our spiritual gifts. My wife over there playing her games. Um, Sorry. But anyway, so starting in 1 Corinthians 14. It says, um, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, and especially that you may prophesy. For the person who speaks in another tongue is not speaking to people, but to God. Since no one understands him, he speaks mysteries in the Spirit. Um, now, the, the big thing there is we are not speaking to man, but we are speaking to God um, when you're, when you're speaking in tongues. Um, and another thing, this is, again, this is one of the things that, you know, um, if I'm wrong about any of this, let me know and, um, you know, back it up with some scripture, uh, because I'm, I'm a big, uh, believer in the word of God. And, you know, if, if I'm wrong, I need to know that, um, I need to get it straight. But one of my speculations um, from Acts 2, I guess I'm going to be going to it anyway. Um, in verse 4, it says, Then they were, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak different tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And again, with context, um, then they were all filled. All here being the uh the the people who were there at that time um and it says that they were they they began to speak in different tongues then you jump down to verse 8 it says how is it that each of us can hear them in our own native language so that's telling me that these people weren't speaking uh you know languages that were unknown these people were speaking languages that foreigners knew and they did not themselves know before uh, they they were filled with the Holy Spirit um, so that that was just my speculation with that um, but moving forward to you know where I'm at now um, with first Corinthians just in the context it, it's leading me to think that, it's not talking about that kind of language. And you'll see what I mean as I continue. Um, if we go into verse 5, verse 5 says, um, actually, I, I skipped one. Let's go down to verse 4. It says, The person who speaks in, an, in another tongue builds himself up, 
but the one who prophesies builds up the church. All right. So, and again, this is going to be jumping back and forth between prophesying and um, speaking in other tongues. Uh, my main focus right now is speaking in tongues. Um, I might come to prophecy later. I don't know. So, um, just from these few opening verses here, um, is speaking in tongues biblical? My belief is yes, it is. I have to start making you silence your phone before I start talking. Um, so, so yes, short answer, I believe that speaking in tongues is biblical. However, um, Paul is about to outline how we are to use that gift. And I'm bringing this up because I've seen a lot, and I'm guilty of doing it myself in the past, um, using this gift in the wrong way, in the wrong setting. Um, so here in verse 6 it says, So now, brothers and sisters, if I come to you speaking in other tongues, how will I benefit you unless I speak to you with a revelation or knowledge or prophecy or teaching? Okay, so, and in a lot, of, and a lot of times when, you know, we hear about people speaking tongues or, um, you know, you, you see people speaking tongues in church and things like that. And according to Paul, anyway, um, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's not, we're not supposed to be speaking in tongues in a church setting unless we have somebody who is interpreting that language, that tongue, what have you. So uh, continuing, verse 7, even lifeless instruments that produce sounds, whether flute or harp, if they don't make a distinction in the notes, how will, how will what is played on the flute or harp be recognized? In fact, if the bugle makes an unclear sound, who will prepare for battle? Verse 9. In the same way, unless you use your tongue for intelligible speech, how will what is spoken be known? Okay. Um, so, you know, that basically what I, what I had already said, you know. Um, and, all right. Yes, even though I wrote these things down, these notes, I'm kind of uh, getting off course here. And I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about this. Because, um, you know, unfortunately, I, I am a little bit uh, worried about how this message is going to be received. But, you know, this is something that's been on my heart for a while. And I have been putting it off and putting it off. And, um, you know, but, but the Lord keeps putting it on my heart that, you know, my word needs to be preached. And, um, you know, so I'm going to quit running from it and address it, um, you know, out of, out of love. And, um, because, you know, I, I see this being practiced and, um, you know, and I'm not saying that it shouldn't be practiced, but I'm, I'm going to just continue and let Paul kind of outline it for us. So, um, verse 11, Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I will be a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker will be a foreigner to me. Now, um, in that text right there, the word foreigner is actually uh, the Greek word, barbaros or barbarian um, so basically you know speaking say you know you're, you're you speak Chinese you don't speak English and you're listening to me right now you have no idea what I'm saying you have absolutely no idea it's not benefiting you at all um, so also you since you are zealous for spiritual gifts seek to excel in building up the church. This is where we are to use our spiritual gifts to build up the church. Now, 
I'm not talking about a church building. I'm not talking about a place. I'm talking about the church of God, the church of Christ, which is the body of Christ. We are the body. Um, so, uh, verse 13, Therefore, the person who speaks in another tongue should pray that he can interpret. For if I pray in another tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What then? Will I pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with my understanding? I will sing praise with the spirit, and I will also sing praise with my understanding. Verse 16, otherwise, if you praise with the Spirit, how will the outsider say amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not know what you are saying? Amen. So, again, building up the church, how can anybody say amen to something that they don't understand? Um, you know, how can they come into agreement? with something if they don't if they don't understand the words that are being said if they don't if they don't understand it um, and then this part right here um, I like this is again Paul says for you may very well be giving thanks but the other person is not being built up I thank God that I speak in other tongues more than all of you this is Paul saying he speaks in tongues more than all of them. But we don't see that in the Bible. It says, Yet in the church I would rather speak five words with my understanding in order to teach others also than 10,000 words in another tongue. So he's basically saying, I'd rather speak, you know, five words that you can understand that an outsider can understand, that a non-believer can understand, rather than 10,000 words speaking in tongues. Now, um, these, these next few verses will go into explaining why. So, I'm going to jump down to verse 22. Um, verse 22 says speaking in other tongues then is intended as a sign not for believers but for unbelievers while prophecy is not for unbelievers but for believers if therefore the whole church assembles together and all are speaking in other tongues and people who are outsiders or unbelievers come in will they not say you are out of your minds but if all are prophesying and some unbeliever or outsider comes in, he is convicted by all and is called to account by all. Verse 25, the secrets of his heart will be revealed, and as a result, he will fall face down and worship God, proclaiming, God is really among you. So, here it says, um, a sign is for unbelievers. Now, this isn't a positive sign for the unbelievers. Um because the uninterpreted tongues function as a sign of judgment to the unbeliever. Um, now, if we think we're out of our minds, that doesn't bring them to Christ. That pushes them away from Christ because they're going to they're going to walk in to this church service and you know every they're going to be looking around and all these people are just you know babbling like madmen. Um, and to an unbeliever, that's what that's what they see. They don't understand what you're doing. They don't understand what this means. They, because they don't understand um, the Holy Spirit and the gift, the, the spiritual gifts. They don't understand those things yet. So, in doing that, in speaking in tongues, um, you're not building up the church. And you know that's that's just what it says, you know, right here. Um, so then, um, so how are we to speak in tongues? If, if, when is it permittable? Well, down in 
Um, verse 27, I'm sorry, I'm kind of reading to see if I can add anything to uh, the verse before it. So, um, alright, so I'm just going to say, uh, verse 27, If anyone speaks in another tongue, there are to be only two, or at the most, three, each in turn, and let someone interpret. But if there is no interpreter, that person is to keep silent in the church and speak to himself and God. So, here we have, um, you can, you can speak in tongues one at a time up to three people with an interpreter. And if there is no interpreter, it is between you and God which is essentially what the gift of tongues is. It is, and especially that's how it was explained to me years ago uh, when I first started, go, started going to a charismatic church, was that speaking in tongues is like you're, you're saying a prayer and you don't know the words to say and you just let the Spirit speak through you um, that's how it was explained to me uh, when I did it when I when I was going to that other church um, and so and I remember because I've been reading articles and and things on this and um, I read did I write it down probably not um, So, anyway, what I read was, um, prophecy is something that God gives you right away, and you speak it, and it, it is a, a, a revelation, um, it's a prophecy. So, it's God speaking to you for the church, whereas speaking in tongues is you speaking to God. So prophecy is God speaking to you and tongues is you speaking to God. All right. Verse 28 again. But if there is no interpreter, that person is to keep silent in the church and speak to himself and God. Um, and then if you go down to the last verses, uh, 37 through 40. If anyone thinks he is a prophet or spiritual, he should recognize that what I write to you is the Lord's command. If anyone ignores this, he will be ignored. 39. So then, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in other tongues. But everything is to be done decently and in order. Alright. So it says right there... Um, do not forbid speaking in other tongues, but everything is to be done decently and in order. So, is speaking in tongues biblical? Yes, it is. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I may ruffle some feathers on both sides of this because there are people who, who say that, you know, speaking in tongues is not biblical. Um, the tongues that they speak of in the Bible are not it's not the tongues that we think of, it's their actual languages. Um, but I don't think that's what it is because Paul says, you know, um, therefore the person who speaks in another tongue should pray that he can interpret. For if I pray in another tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. So if they're talking about speaking in, in another language, you know, you're able to to understand that other language if it's an earthly language. Um, so, you know, but on the other hand, there's a lot of, of charismatics, um, friends of mine personally who might not um, agree with me on this. Um, but my thing is to understand how it is to um, how how it is to be used properly, um, and here it is. I mean, chapter fourteen. It's it's an outline 
of exactly how to do it. So, here's my conclusion. Speaking in tongues is not only mentioned in Scripture, but is in fact encouraged. However, it is to be done correctly according to Scripture. And, you know, one, one big thing that I want to um, stay on here, that, that I want to hold myself to, is that God's Word does not change. I think we can all agree on that. God's Word does not change. And if this is what God's Word says, then why have the practices changed? You know, this is, this is Paul writing to the Corinthians and, um, you know, telling them how these things are to be done in order to glorify God in order to build up the church, in order to bring people to Christ. And, um, you know, especially when it comes to, I mean, say that, you know, I, I go to a charismatic church and I invite, you know, somebody who I'm trying to bring to the Lord. And we walk in there you know, and the worship service is great, and, uh, you know, then all of a sudden people start breaking out into tongues. Um, as somebody who doesn't know the Lord and has probably heard stories, you know, crazy stories about, you know, this kind of thing, and, um, and then they end up being in that uh, situation. I mean, it, it might scare off some people. But, on the other hand, other people, it might not scare them off so much. But, you know, my point is, you know, 1 Corinthians 14. Um, and, you know, this, <laughs> I'm actually very surprised um, that this video has not been longer. I was expecting it to be longer because you all know how I like to ramble. Um, but again, like I said, I've, I've been nervous about this. I've been... Um, kind of um, chewing it around a little bit wondering you know should I or shouldn't I do this um, but you know what when when the Lord moves you you need to move um, because there have been other uh, topics in the past that you know were a little bit um, controversial also um, that I just kind of put on a back burner and then never really picked it back up. In fact, I still have those notes um, right here in front of me. Um, but I'm too scared to do it, you know. And, um, you know, I think it's normal to be a little bit nervous when, when speaking the truth. Um, you know, uh, Moses was, you know, Mo uh, God called Moses, you know, to be... Um, to be his his voice basically and he says um, but Lord I have unclean lips um, which basically he was saying I have a speech impediment so there was something um, with his mouth with his lips that um, he couldn't speak properly and uh, God gave him Aaron he said Aaron will be your voice. You will be my voice. You will speak to Aaron. Aaron will speak to the people. So God finds a way. You know, if, if God calls you to do something, um, he'll find a way to do it. Um, you know, and so I guess I just have to get over my fears. Um, stop worrying about what people are going to think of me because Paul didn't have that problem. <laughs> he had no problem telling people um, how it was. Um, and Paul was one of the most blasphemous, Christian-hating people that there was. And, um, you know, it took, it, it took him one encounter with Jesus face-to-face, -face and um, everything changed for him. 
So anyway, uh, that's what I've got for you for now. Um, if you liked it, didn't like it, um, let me know. If you didn't like it, let me know why. If you did like it, let me know why. If you think I'm wrong, again, I say this in every video, let me know why. Let me know where I'm wrong and show me. Because that's all I'm doing here is I'm showing you what the word says. Um, so, anyway, God bless. And, um, you know, it's not my intention to come on here and offend anybody. Um, not at all. But, you know, if, if something in here did offend you, um, take a look at it. Figure out why. Because I know there's have, there have been things that I've come across in the Bible reading it, and I'm like, that doesn't sound right. So I study it. And when I say study it, that doesn't, doesn't mean that I just read it over and over and over again. Um, you know, again, I've, I've explained this before. I look at the context, the whole context. I will go to other sources. I'll go to study Bibles. I'll look it up online from multiple sources, from, you know, different uh, preachers and theologians, and I'll ask personal friends. I get all the information that I can on something if I have questions about it. So, you know, that's, that's all I'm asking for here is, uh, you know, uh, take a look at it for yourself. And um, that's it. So anyway, guys, God bless you. Have a good night. And um, I'll see you soon.